Praise God. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everybody. God bless you all for joining me. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you, Kendall. God bless you. God bless you, Kendall. Good morning. God bless you. Leslie, God bless you for joining. Oladosu, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, please, can we invite our friends and family to join us? Let's invite our families and friends to join us. Good afternoon, everybody. God bless you all. While we are doing the invitation, I want us to open our heart and begin to thank God for today. Let's thank God. Let's thank God for bringing us here together. Let's appreciate God for today. Let's thank Him for giving us the privilege to, to be alive today, to come together in His presence. Let's thank God for the gift of life. I want us to open our mouth and begin to pray, beloved. If you're joining me, let's begin to worship God. Let's worship God. Let's bless Him. Let's appreciate Him for strength, for life, for all that He has done for us. It's not by our power that we're able to be here this afternoon. It's by the grace of God. Let's appreciate Him. Let's ask Him to have mercy upon us and give us the grace to continue to love Him every day of our life. Let's open our mouth and ask God to wash us as white as snow. Let's ask Him to give us the grace to continue to serve Him. Give us the grace to continue to know that He is our God, no matter the situation we find ourselves. Let's pray and ask God to have mercy upon us, to strengthen us, to empower us, To be by us every day of our lives. Ask God to equip you. Ask God to honor you in this meeting. Ask Him to meet you at the very point of your need through this message. Hope you are mad and tell God as you have tuned in this afternoon that you will not tune in in vain. That you must go home with a word that will touch your life. A word that will transform your life. A word that will heal and bring restoration, deliverance into your life in the name of Jesus. Ask God to open your eyes. Ask God to open your ears. Ask God to open your heart. Ask God to cause you to see and to know what He wants you to know in this message today. Ask God that this message will be a blessing to you and I that this word of God today will bless us richly in our hearts, down to our soul, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to stop. I want somebody to begin to pray. Please pray. As you're praying, commit the atmosphere in the hands of God. Ask that the Lord should take charge of this meeting. Ask that the blood of Jesus will subdue whatever that is not of God, every principality, every power, whatever that is not the purpose of God for this meeting is destroyed by the power in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is not the agenda of the Holy Ghost in this meeting, their plans have been shattered in the name of Jesus. 
whatever that is not the mind of God concerning this meeting, concerning your life today in this meeting, let the blood of Jesus rise and begin to destroy their meeting, destroy their purpose, destroy their plans against our meeting today in the name of Jesus. I want you to say, oh God, remember me in this meeting. Remember me. Last week message, in fact, really blessed somebody. You know, I told you that when a message is coming out, it might not be for everybody. But it is if it is for you, don't hesitate to grab it into your heart. Don't hesitate to grab it into your heart and begin to make use of it. In that way, that is only how you can be blessed. That's only how God can meet you at the very point of your need. Like I always told us, it's not about the topic. It's about the word of God. It's about what God wants us to hear. It's about what God wants to do through the word he wants us to hear at that particular time of the day. All we just need is to open our heart. Is to open our heart to the Lord and open up our mouth. The word of God said, the Bible said we should open wide our mouth and the Lord will fill it. Open your heart, open your mouth, open your soul. Open it up and let God begin to fill your mouth. And as you begin to prophesy it, begin to speak it, they will begin to take root in your heart. And begin to pro, you know, produce that which God has given you in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, I don't want you to feel dismayed. I don't want you to feel discouraged. I want you to be happy. I want you to know that God is here with us. God is in this meeting. God knows this hour. God knows you are, you, are, you are going to tune into this message. God knows that you will encounter this message today. God knows that through this message that he's going to speak to your situation. He knows. He knows you. He knows you. He knows you. He knows everything about you. There is nothing about you that God doesn't know about. In the name of Jesus. I want you to ask God to bring you in any way you've gone wrong, that he should show you mercy. His mercy endures forever. His compassion lasts forever. Ask him to show compassion on you today. He said, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy to and have compassion on whom I choose to have compassion on. Ask God to have compassion on you. Cry out loud like David did. Cry out loud. And pray and ask God to not pass you by. That that which God has for you in this message today, that that is what you will hear and run with it in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak against every demon, every spirit, every word devourer. You know, there are agents that devour word of God in our heart. Agents of darkness that will tell you this word, you don't need it. This message today is not for you. You don't, it's not for you. So don't just key into it, don't just believe it, don't just listen to it. There are people like that, there are agents like that. I don't want you to take heed of such word. I don't want you to believe such word. I want you to believe that God is right here with you and through this word, through this message today, he will touch your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to begin to cover this message with the blood of Jesus, cover our meeting with the blood of Jesus. Cover our meeting with the blood of Jesus. Cover it with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> cover our meeting with the blood of Jesus. Father, we cover our meeting with the blood of Jesus today. In the name of Jesus. There is nothing the Lord cannot do. Nothing. There is nothing he doesn't know about. There is no situation he can't turn around. There is no sin he can't forgive you. There is no way he cannot make perfect in your life. There is no crook way in your life that he can make straight. All you need to do is to understand the plan and the purpose of God and the will of God for your life at every given season. In that way, God will not be far from you and you'll be a candidate of the kingdom of God by your works. By faithfulness, by obedience to the word of God. By the love that you have for God in your heart. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. King of glory, we thank you for an hour like this. We bless you because we know you are already here in our midst. We thank you because we know that you meet us through this message. You touch our life, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, Jehovah, help us to obey your word today. Help us to do your word today. Help us to love you more. Help us to be obedient to your word. Despite the challenges we are passing through every day of our life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He will see Rabaragi no be. Asina Madula Jugi. Stay na mara. Ngesogi. Ngesogi. Onye zapotam. He will see the Yabaragi no be. Asina Waduma Jugi. Namaragi Ngesogi. That song is saying. By the grace of God, say, Lord, I will follow you. Even if the whole world has rejected you, say, by your grace and your mercy, say, I will keep following you, God. Hmm. I will see Robert again, be. I see na what do my jogi na maragi ngesogi. Oh, my savior. That song says, "I will follow you, Lord, my savior. I will follow you, even if the whole world abandon you. Say, Lord, I will follow you to the end." Oh, he will see your parade, and see na maduma jugi na maragi ngesogi. Wow, 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 wow! That song is very, 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 very touching. I think somebody needs it at this hour. Telling God that God, I will follow you. I will keep on following you. I will keep on serving you, no matter my situation. No matter who is with me, no matter who is against me, no matter who sees me, however they see me, as long as you know me from the throne of heaven, that is enough for me. And I will follow you to the end. Who is professing that with me? If you are professing that with me today, may the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you the strength and the grace to continue to serve him, to continue to love him, to continue to be his great servant, to continue to be his child to the end of time in the name of Jesus. God is seeking for such that will follow him to the end. He said, if you love me and want to serve me and want to follow me, he said you will deny yourself of so many things. If you want to follow God, you have to carry your cross. You have to truly carry that cross in a sincere heart in the name of Jesus. And God will keep protecting you. God will keep blessing you. God will keep empowering you. God will keep strengthening you and making way for you where there seems to be no way in the name of Jesus. God is a faithful God. He never fails. He never fails. Hold on to God. And he will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. We love it. You're welcome once again. I want you to please kindly click the share button and invite your friends to join us before we go to the topic. By his grace, I, I think I won't be wasting much time. I won't be wasting much time, but we'll allow the Holy Spirit to lead us however it pleases him. Because I am not the one using myself, but God is. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes, invite your friends, invite them, invite them. I'm inviting, I will soon stop right now and then we'll go into the world so I can concentrate. Hallelujah. Chineke Mazuru. Audi Ebara Yagari Nandumo. Chineke Mu Mazuru. Chiova Mazuru. Chineke mazuru pamo, 
Odiye bara ya rina dumu chineke mu mazuru God knows your situation God knows your heart God knows what you're doing God knows where you're hiding God knows your good hearts God knows your good deeds God is seeing your good behaviors the bad ones God is seeing whatever you're doing wherever you are God is seeing you nothing is ever hidden in the in the sight of God Say nothing Nothing, nothing so difficult that God cannot handle, that God cannot turn around. He sees everything. He sees you wherever you are. He knows your situation right now. He knows how dearly you need and want him today. If you're that person who is crying from wherever you are, telling God, God, I need you today, you will see God. God will touch you. He will visit you. You will not go untouched today in the name of Jesus. Except if you just skin in for his sake. Except if you just skin in, you know, to for fun. But if you key in, knowing too well that God will meet you at the very point of your need. He will touch your heart. It will, he will arrange, you know, your mindset on things that are most important to him. Because... Until we know what is more important to God towards us, I'm telling you, sister, brother, whatever you think you're doing, you're just doing it for fun. You're doing it for fun. You're doing it for your own self. Hallelujah. So, by the grace of God today, I want to minister on a topic I've titled, Accept Jesus in your heart and not in your mind. Accept Jesus in your heart and not in your mind. This message is very simple. As simple as A, B, C, D. As simple as A, B, C, D. You know, like I told us, in the world we are today, the only thing that can keep us close to God is our constant relationship with God. The only thing that can keep us close to God, the only thing that can keep us, you know, continue to love God despite our situation, despite the challenge we face every day, it is our ability to keep coming close to God, listening to the word of God, reading our scripture, you know, listening to songs that are edifying, not worldly songs, you know, going to a godly gathering, cleaving to things that are worthy, that are righteous, that are holy before the Lord, things that are worth doing, not things that are not godly, things that are not worth doing. That is the only way. And today, by the grace of God, I want to remind us again, I want to remind us again that we should accept Jesus in our heart and not in our mind or in our head. Somebody will say, what is the topic about accepting Jesus in my heart, not in my mind? What does she mean? Beloved, many of us today in the world we only accept Jesus with our mind or just accept God in our head. We just think of it. We hear of it. We just, you know, think over it over and over again. We just like, just upper thinking, but we don't take it down deep into our heart where we we'll begin to do something about it. Where we we'll begin to question ourselves. Am I living right before God? Are my ways pure before God? Are my lifestyle okay before God? Do God love me with my lifestyle, with my situation, with what I am doing? Do God love me? Am I pleasing God? Or am I pleasing myself? Or am I pleasing somebody somewhere? We have to come to a stage where we all need to ask ourselves this question. Am I accepting Jesus or have I accepted Jesus in my heart? Have I truly, indeed, not in need? Look at that word. Have I truly, indeed, not in need, accepted Christ with my heart? Because when you accept Christ indeed, you show God how much you love Him. You tend to please God with all things that you do. 
you would not want to hurt God. You would not want to sin against God. But when you are accepting God in need, it means you're only coming to God because you know you want to ride jump. You're only coming to God because you know you want to go for wayek. You only come into God because you know you want to put in your paper. You only come into God because you know you want to travel and you need safety. You need safe journey. You only want to come to God because you needed a baby. You needed to be conceived and have your baby. Or you needed that job. Or you needed to travel abroad. Whatever the case may be. That is you serving God in, in need. Because you are in need. But the moment you begin to serve God in deed, in truth, and in the spirit, that is when you involve working out your salvation. That is when you involve that scripture that says we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. With fear. Look at that word. Fear and trembling. Trembling. With humility. Have you accepted Jesus in your heart? Many people today accepted Jesus in their mind and only in their head. And that's why you see a lot of people today in the church, they just go to church, you know, just covering seat, just for going sake. Many of them will go and come back remaining the same, remaining unchanged. Remaining untransformed. Remaining the way they are. Without allowing the hand of God to move deeply in their life. Without allowing the, the hand of God to touch them, touch their heart. They only accept God only in their mind. Only in their head. Only at that moment. Anything after that. Everything is wiped off. The message is wiped off. The topic is even forgotten. Some of them will forget their topic that was treated in their church. You ask them what is today's service topic. They won't even remember. Those are the categories of people who serve God. In their mind. And in their head. And with their own knowledge. Because when you serve God with your mind or your head. You only, add, you, only you know. Employing your, your own knowledge of service. But when you begin to serve God with your heart, it is when you will not deploy yourself. You will not deploy your, your own knowledge. You will not deploy your own mentality. You will not begin to employ, employ or employ the knowledge of God, the word of God. Em employ God himself. You will not begin to know that it's all about God. And what about and what about what, whatever he's saying concerning you? When you are serving God with your heart, is then you now know that it, it don't longer matter much. God matters most in your life and in whatever you are doing. It may not be easy. I don't want to promise you that it's gonna be easy. It's not going to be easy. The gospel of Jesus is not easy. Serving God is not easy. But the word of God says that he that endureth to the end shall see God. He that endures to the end. You can go and read Matthew chapter 5 very well. That will tell you much about what I'm saying. He that endures all these temptations. He that endures all these trials. He that endures all these tribulations. He that endures all this mockery. The Bible says that person shall see God on the last day. If only you believe that there is last day. If only you believe that there is judgment day. If only you believe that a day is coming when the Lord shall come in His power and in His glory. When the Lord shall come for His people. When He shall come in power and in glory. I am telling you that until you begin to see God in through your heart, not through your head, not through your mind, but down deep into your heart, you have not started. 
we need a constant reminder of the great kingdom of God. We need a constant reminder of who God is. We need a constant reminder of how to serve God and to serve Him faithfully. No matter what people may say, no matter what they may think of us, as long as you know your service with God, as long as you know your relationship with God, as long as you know what you're doing with God, the hand of God will never cease operation in your life. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, I am telling you, most messages like this have been neglected. Most messages like this have been abandoned. Most messages like this don't have much viewers. Most messages like this, people don't really care. People only care about what they want. We don't longer care for God. But I am telling you that time is coming. Now that they are very busy chasing things that really matters to you. Time is coming. When if you don't make out time right now for God. If you don't make out time right now for God who died for you on the cross of Calvary. If you don't make out time for the God who created the world and not that is in this world you are chasing after. If you don't make out time for God now that you can. If you don't make out time for God now that you are still breathing. I am assuring you that there is no repentance in the grave. I am assuring you that there is no correction in the grave. I am assuring you that there is no change in the grave. This is now you have the time to change. This is now you have the time to amend your ways. This is now you have the time to begin to serve God from your heart and not from your mind, not from your head, not from your own self-knowledge, but from the wisdom of the word of God. The word of God says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, you have taken God to heart. You have loved God from your heart. You fear him. You serve him because you referenced him. You, 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 you rate him more valuable above whatever around you. Until we begin to see God in this way. We are only serving God with our mind. Beloved, when you look at things that is going on in the world of today, there are so many that we are putting in our head. So many things going on in the world. So many distractions. So many pains. So many sorrows. So many, you know. So many things going on. And we have put much in our head. We, are, we look much. We see things. Our heart and mind is being occupied with unnecessary things. All those things we have allowed the devil to pile up in our heart will not begin to make us or put God's position in our life as, you know, seeing God from our mind and from our head and from our own, you know, um, perspective of knowledge rather than seeking God or serving God from our heart. Whatever is hearted is dear, is, you know, how do I put it? Is very precious. Whatever is in your heart is so precious. And anything that is rooted in your heart can hardly be uprooted. No one can uproot whatever that is in your heart. If something is down deep in your heart, you love God down deep from your heart. Situation cannot tell you to choose whether you serve God or not. If you love God down from your heart, no matter where you find yourself, no matter the situation you find yourself, you will continue to love God and serve God with all happiness. Because God is in your heart and not in your mind, not in your head, not from your own knowledge of understanding. When we look at the scripture in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Let's go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs. Proverbs 3. Mm. Hope 
Tell your problems to God, not man. When you tell your problems to God, God will know how to handle it. That's what that song is saying. Come to Jesus with all your heart. Come to him with your problems. Come to him with your, your brokenness. Come to him as you are. He is ready to accept you. Hallelujah. That is it. That is it. Men will deceive you. Friends will deceive you. Lots of things will happen, but Jesus can never, never, never deceive you. God can never leave you alone. God can never abandon you. The moment you begin to serve God from your heart, not from mind, not from your head, not from your own knowledge, God can never leave you. He can't forsake you. He can't abandon you. I am telling you. Glory to Jesus. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3, 5-6. Now I'll read. He said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And now let me start from verse 1. He said, My son. The word of God is saying, My son, my daughter, my son, my daughter, do not forget my law. What is the law? The, the word of God is the law. The principle of the kingdom is the law. The principle of how we can serve God in holiness and in righteousness. That is the law. That is the law. And the Bible says in that uh, Proverbs 3, it says, My son, do not forget my law. But let your heart keep my commands. Did the word of God say, let your mind, let your head, let your own understanding keep my command. But he said, let your heart keep my commands. If you don't love God with your heart, down from your heart, how can you keep the commandments of God from your heart, in your heart? I mean, you can't keep the commandments of God in your heart if you don't love God from your heart. Those who do not keep the commandment of God are those who love God in their mind, in their own head, in their own understanding. There are people who go to church and come back remaining the same, no change, from January to December. There are people who go to program, no change. There are people who hear the word of God just like myself and you is listening to it right now. Maybe after now, everybody will just go, it look as if it's something that is... Something that is done on a regular basis. So oh, I've been hearing of this for a long time. I mean, I, I mean, it's not new. I, I've been hearing this. Well, for you to hear it again is a great privilege. Because God wants you to change from that which is not right in your life. God wants you to change. That is why you're coming across this message again. If God don't want you to change, if he doesn't love you to a point where he needs you to come back from that wicked ways you are following, this message will not come across you today. I am telling you, God is always after our soul. He's always after our life. He's always after us. Despite the fact that we know we have needs, even God knew we have needs from foundation. He knew we are in troubles. He knew we are in difficult situations. He knew that some things will happen to us. He knew that it is not easy to carry the cross. He knew it. But he promised us. He said he will be with us till the end of time. He said he will be with us till the end of time. Till the end of age. Till the end of this world. God cannot swallow back his word. The word of God is sure. The word of God is permanent. This God, the word of God is unchangeable. Nobody can delete it. In the name of Jesus. I will read for that. Chimo, chimo. Anigi kangefe. Onye keri gwenua. Anigi kangefe. Ezi chimo. Anigi kangefe. Onye kere ni kwenu wa dadi, nani gi kam gefe, ezi chimo, chimo, chimo. 
na nigi kan kefe na manye ngi emu na gabiga na nigi kan kefe le ezi chimo that song says you alone I will serve God no matter the situation you alone I'm going to serve you alone I'm going to serve my grateful and merciful God what a wonderful song hallelujah Say, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. When you love God with your heart, serve him. He will give you long life. I say, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Truth and mercy are forsaking a lot of us today. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. On the tablet of your heart. It didn't say on the tablet of our mind. But on the tablet of our heart. Not in our mind. Or in our head. Or in our own knowledge of understanding. So we should bind them around our heart. The tablet of our heart. And trust in the Lord. For now say trust in the Lord with all your heart. And learn not on your own understanding. Learn not on your own understanding. Six said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We all need direction in life. We all need direction in life. We all want to make it. We all need the best. How do we know and see the best when we don't have God in us? When we have not allowed Christ to lead us in the path that is righteous before God. There are things that God has Kept for myself and you. And until we begin to seek him. Until we begin to come close to him. Until we begin to see God the way he sees us. Until we begin to obey him and come close to him. Every day. We can't achieve those things. God will not be happy with us. And all these things occur as a result of how we rate God in our heart. How we put God. How we position God. What we take God to be. Where we place God in our life. Do you place God and his word in your heart? Or do you place him in your mind, in your head, or in your own understanding? Those who believe God and trust God and do not joke with God, who love God from their heart, are those who simply keep the commandment of God. Are those who simply love God. Are those who seek the kingdom of God. Are those who are eager to know more of God every day. Without even forcing them. Without forcing them. Without talking much. Hallelujah. But those who take God just in their mind, in their head, and from their own understanding are people who just... Who, just like we are listening now, the moment we all log off, now everybody will just go back to their ways. Go back to what they are doing, go back to their lifestyle, go back to whatever it is that is pleasing them and giving them joy. It might be cocaine that is giving them, they think is giving them joy. It might be a drug, it might be cigarette, it might be a drink, alcohol, it might be, you know, lust for women, it might be adultery, fornication, lying, stealing, killing they go back to it. Such people are people who do not take God into their heart, but they hang or place Him just in their mind and in their head and in their own understanding, how they understand God. Beloved, how do you understand? How do you take God? Have you accepted Jesus in your heart? Have you accepted Him in your heart? If you do, congratulations and may the Lord bless you for taking that bold step and for cleaving to that which is right before the eyes of the Lord. For your end shall be great in the name of Jesus. Look at that. Accepting Jesus in our heart and not in our mind. Not in our head, not in our own way of understanding. Hallelujah. That scripture, you can go ahead and read it in your own time. Read it. Ask God to minister to you. It's high time you come back to see God from your heart. 
not from your mind. People who see God, who seek God from their mind, are people who cajo God. Are people who don't take God serious. Are people who just take the word of God for the mockery. There are people who don't even care about God or his word or whatever. But if you love God from your heart, you will be rooted in God. And when the wind of the word will blow, it will not be able to blow you off the hand of God. When you, are, when you take God and serve God from your heart, no matter the situation you find yourself, the wind of this world cannot blow you off from the hand of God. But when you take God just on the leap, just in your mind, just in your head, coupled with all that is already accumulated in, your, in our heads, that we see every day on a daily basis, will not even add more disadvantage to the way we should see God rather than adding advantage to the way we should see God. Beloved, they said it's easy said than done. When you seek God or when you're serving God, God bless you, bro, John, John Ronnie, Sister Gona, God bless you. Nancy, God bless you for joining. Ferdinand, God bless you. Ferdinand Mary, God bless you for joining. Sister Mary, uh, God bless you. God bless you for joining me. God bless you. Sister Ebelechi, God bless you. Mujisola, God bless you. Sister Me, God bless you. Sister Gweda, God bless you. A lot of you, Mother of God, Evangelist Mary, God bless you for joining. Lisa, God bless you. God bless you all. Please, if I can't call your name now, just be happy. God has seen you. God knows you are there. And he will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus. So what am I saying? I was telling us something that is easier said than done. And the topic of today, we are talking about accepting Jesus in your heart and not in your mind. Not in your head. Not in your own understanding. Because when you look at the world of today, that is what is happening. Many of us accept God in our mind, in our head, in our own understanding. And that is why we don't tend to see the way God is seeing things. That's why we don't want to believe the word of God anymore. That's why we find it difficult to comply you know, with the word of God. Because God is not in our heart. He's not in our heart. He just in our mind and in our head and in our own understanding. Because our own selfish understanding will always tell us God is not important. God is not important. You shouldn't take God serious. You should just go to church for going sake. You shouldn't involve in the things of God in our various churches. You shouldn't go for evangelism. We shouldn't, you know, you know, do things that are godly before God. The God that we have put in our mind, the spirit of the mind and the spirit of flesh will always wipe away the love of God that we are supposed to have for God that will take root in our heart away from us. Until you begin to pray yourself out and break yourself out of that shackle, that spirit will hold your enemy down forever. But I pray that that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. That will also be my portion in the name of Jesus. Look at that scripture we just read, Proverbs 3, from verse 1 to 6. It said, love God with all your heart and learn not in your own understanding. Many of us are doing it like that. That is not the way we should love God. Like I said, it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. Somebody can easily say now, Oh, I love God. Huh? Do you love God? Well, of course I do. I love God. I'm a born again. I'm a born again from so 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 church. I'm a born again from so 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 background. Weather well, is fine. Now, action speaks louder than voice. It is your action that will not define whether what you're saying is actually truth 
or not. It's easier said than done. Many of us can say, I may born again. I may born again. I've accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. Yes, I'm in choir. I'm in prayer warrior. I am a pastor. I'm an evangelist. I'm this and that. It's easier said than done. Are you doing what is attached to what you are as a child of God? That is where the work lies. And the moment you begin to do what is attached to your title, whether pastor, evangelist, prophet, prophet, a, 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 a deacon, deaconess, apostle, whatever, church goer, member, sister, brother, minister John, minister Peter, minister this, minister that, until you begin to behave, show the attitude and the manner, like Apostle Paul said, we should present ourselves in the manner worthy of the Christ we are representing. That is, that, is, that is as simple as also loving God from your heart. Because if you love God from your heart, all you want to do is to try to please God. Even though when we cannot all please God. But God knows when you are striving to please Him. You know when somebody is hungry for something, you're thirsty for something. Just like people are desperate to do something that is so important to them until you begin to take God like that say God when God is most important in your life that is when you've taken God into your heart that is when you have loved God from your heart not from your mind not from your head not from your own way of understanding it's easier said than done these are the category of people who profess Christ but nothing to show for it. Easier said than done. They profess Christ, they say it, nothing to show for it. Now, action speaks louder than voice. This is when your action will prove your word, that which you're proclaiming that you do for God. You love God, you do this action will not speak it. Your action will not show for it. Action by working it out. Like the word of God says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for without which you have to work out your salvation. You have to work it out. Yes, we know that it's not by works that man will be saved. But why did the scripture say work at your salvation if working at our salvation is not important? Working at our salvation is important to God because that is where you show God the action part of your con confession to Him. You don't just confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Oh Lord, I've accepted you. Forgive me my sins. My sins, forgive me, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Wash me with, with your precious blood. Today, I repent for my sins. Fine, good. You have confessed your sins. God has heard you and forgiven you. The moment you now begin to act what you have just confessed is the action part of it. And, it, and that is when it will now begin to show that you have taken God to heart, not to mind. Neither your head nor your from your understanding. You are not taking God to heart by acting it. Some of us are full of carnality. We can't even hold ourselves. We can't hold ourselves for long. Some of some men are just a night without woman. No night without woman. No night without man. All sort of behavior, all sort of immorality, all sort of carnality, all sort of sin. When you profess it, you come back to yourself and now begin to apply it with action. Now, you are a born again. You have accepted the Lord as a, your accepted Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior. And, you know, 
you have made up your mind to serve God. Devil sees you when you begin to take serious steps that will help your relationship with God. He knows. Then he will now position somebody as an agent, as a tempter of your faith. Just like devil himself did tempt Christ on the mountain, top of the mountain. And that agent will appear. Don't forget that that agent may appear in form of somebody who is your friend. That agent could be your wife, could be your husband. That agent the devil will use to tempt you may be your best friend, maybe your sister, your brother. That agent could be your manager in your place of work. That agent could be anybody around you. It could be those you least expected. They could even do such thing. Just like the Bible said, the, the worst enemy of a man is that of his household. Not only that of your household. When, when that word means the household, household, it means somebody, people that are close to you, people that are around you. It might not be people directly from your own family. It could be other people who are, you know, close to you, a kind of people you you so much trusted, so people you, you know, you so much believed in. You never thought they can, you know, um, you know, um, hand to you anyhow or you know, uh, you, you get what I'm trying to say? In that manner, you will not know that. The moment you begin to see God and grab Him into your heart, knowing full well that your works will be tested, then the grace to overcome will be there. God will help you. When you are doing like that, it means you have taken God to heart. You have hearted God. I see people say, oh, gee baby, I heart you. Emeka, I heart you. Um, Uchechuku, I heart you. This one, I heart you. That one, I heart you. Have you hearted God? You heart men. Good, fine. It's good to heart people we care for. Have you hearted God? Ask yourself that question. Have you hearted God? Heart God first. Heart God in your heart. Heart Him. Because men will break that heart one day. Women will break that heart one day. Your children may break that heart one day. Your friends may break that heart one day. People around you may break that heart one day. But you see, one person that cannot break your heart is God. Though. I am telling you it's God. God can never break your heart. When you know what you are doing with God, God can never break your heart. Can't break your heart. You may find yourself in a, situ in a situation that is very difficult and you don't know how to express it. God is seeing you. It's a test of time. Your faith might be testing. God might be testing your faith. It might be that God is testing you. Do we endure temptations? Most of us, temptations has made us, you know, put us in some certain situation today because we don't endure it. We endure. Show God, oh, your little effort as human and God will help you. In the name of Jesus. I want us to come to a point and that point, that time is now. Because you're postponing it may be too late. You may say, oh God, I'll hurt you tomorrow. I'll take you serious from tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Somebody told me yesterday night about somebody who died here in Aberdeen. A man of God who died here in Aberdeen, you know. I was like, eh? In this, in you know, Scotland here in Aberdeen. I was like, what? It happened last two weeks or so. People are dying every day, beloved. It is not joke. Is it not high time you begin to think about your soul? Is it not high time? Yes, even if it is joke or not real. Risk it and say, yes, let me risk it and believe in it is not real, that heaven is real. Risk it that way and see. Maybe at the end, when it is now real, then you enjoy it. 
Because I'm pretty sure that heaven is real. God is real. Jesus is real. Things around us can tell us all these things every day. But yet, we have chosen to be adamant to, to, to sense things. We don't want to sense things. We don't want to, we don't want to allow our heart to be broken, to be touched, to be handled by God. But rather, we have chosen to give God our mind. We are choosing to give God our head, our own understanding. We don't want to hurt God. We don't want to put him in our heart. When God is in your heart, when God is in your heart, you are a blessed person. I'm telling you. It is the grace of God that man cannot give that will be seeing you through. Through that situation, through that test of time, through that weary time, through that time that it's only you who can understand your situation because sometimes nobody knows what you're going through but except only you and God. But when you hurt God in those situations, God can never abandon you. God can never forsake you. God can never. You know, at times... Like I said, it's easier said than done. You can be telling God now, Oh God, you know you are my best. Oh God, you know I love you. You know I can't do without you. You, are, you know you are my paddy paddy. Oh God, you know this. Oh God, you know that. You know, we we'll begin to profess what we can do, what we cannot do. We we'll tell God all manner, all kinds. And God will like, eh, is it true? Did she love me? Hey, I will see now. She said she loved me. He said he loved me. God will be watching you. He will be watching you. He will be watching you, you know. He will just keep quiet and be watching. Say, let me see who says he loved me. Devil will not come to test, to try you. God will not keep quiet and watch, 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 watch. In those periods, it doesn't mean that God hates you. It doesn't mean that God is not close. But God wants to test your confession. God wants to test what you have said. Because you, you told God you have accepted him. Just like many of us will go for a program or whatever, or another call will be called. Today's topic is accept Jesus in your heart, not in your mind. Have you accepted him? Many of us will say, yes, I do. I've accepted God. What about in the days of testing? Will you still stand? Will you still stand for the Lord? Will you still stand and stand strong for the Lord? Testing of time. Testing of our faith. Testing of, you know, our belief in God. Shows how we have hearted God and how we have put God in our mind and in our head and treat him from our own understanding. Beloved, I want to take us to Psalm 139. Let's go to Psalm 139 from 20... What, what 20 again? 23 to 24. Psalm 139 from 23 to 24. The Bible said, they say, Search me, O God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Is that your cry now? Is that your cry? Telling God, O oh God, search me. The psalmist said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. Do you know that God can try you? Try me and know my anxieties. You know, some, sometimes we'll be anxious. We should be, we'll, we'll be anxious about things that we go through. And verse 24, and I say, And see if there is any wickedness or any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Is this your prayer today? If this is your prayer, then it means you heart God dearly. You heart God. 
Because someone who had God is someone who, who will always want to seek after things that will help his walk with God. And not things that will, that will be drawing, him, drawing you back. Or, you know, drawing you back to square one. Drawing you back to your sinful life. Drawing you back to your own lifestyle. The moment you begin to say, God, search me. Search me. Search my heart. Search my soul. And see and know for yourself. Try me. Try me, God. Have you come to that point in your life where you say, Oh God, search me, Lord. Search me. Try me to see whether indeed, whether I love you or not. Test me. Try me. For you to have come to that level, it means you know your confidence. You know your relationship with God. You know who you are in God. And now, what about those of you who just profess God with mouth? Who truly goes to church? Like tell everybody, you know, we go to church. He dance, dance, dance. He do all sorts. He look as if he's a, he's a club. He's a, you know, a kajo hall, hall, a hall, a kajo place. A place will just come and kajo. Everybody will kajo, do what they want and go. We we'll go back our own ways. We say it, we don't do it. What about if God comes to test you, to search you? What can God search out? What can God search out from you? Can God search out obedience? Can He search out? Can He search out humility? Can He search out, you know, through salvation? Can He search out, you know, a true service. When I say true service, because when you are a true child of God, of course, your services to God will be pure and true. They will not be fake. They will not be fake. Because a lot of people are faking things these days. They fake service. They fake worship. You see people today in the church, they are just doing it for fertility sake. It's not coming from their heart. They just want to show that they are the one who can clean the hands of God very well, more than others. They just want to show that they are, they are the one that can sing very well. They just want to show that they are the, you know, that kind of service, eye service. But when the woman of God is not there, or Gio, or Mama, or Daddy, or anybody, or Pastor, you see everybody misbehaving. Nobody will know that. Those are the category of people who don't take God to heart. Because if you take God to heart, you know what you have come to do in the house of God, even without being told. You don't wait until you are told before you do things. You don't wait until you are told before you know that you can sing very well. Once you know yourself, you have identified your gift, you don't wait for pastor to tell you, pastor, sister, come and join why? Come and join this, come and join this team, come and join that team. You already know you. You already know you. You already know yourself. And you know what you carry. You go to that department and flow there. Flow, and when you are flowing, you flow for God, not for man. Don't flow for man. If you flow for man, you fail. Flow for God. Yes, they may come to attack you. You know, devil always attack what is good and real. When you are busy serving your God from your heart, when others are busy castigating you, want to pull you down, want to spoil you before the mommy or before the daddy, don't mind them. Just know what they are doing. At the end, them that want to disgrace you, God will disgrace them. Them that want to make your work as if it is nothing, God will now bring you out and announce you and sanction you. In that same place, if that is where God wants you to remain, I'm telling you the truth. These are people who hurt God. You don't hurt God from out. You hurt God by action. Action speaks louder than voice. It's easier said than done are the categories of people who put God in their mind, in their head, and in their own understanding, using God the way they want. But action that speaks louder than voice are people who hurt God from their heart, who do what God wants, who love God, who serve God. Who, who, who does not want to see the work of God suffer? These are the people that love God. Loving God is action word. It's not a mere say. 
when you hurt God, you will want to make sure that the work of your father is not is not suffering. When you hurt God with your heart, you give God your time. You give God your time. You give God your service. You give God your money. You give God your everything. Your soul. Because if you give God your time, your money, your service, your time, and everything, and you don't give God your soul. You see, this soul, you have to give it to God. Soul. It is your soul. It is how you have prepared this soul. That will not grant you eternal life. If the soul is not well prepared, when your enemy die, your soul is not heading to any way. Rather, it will head the negative side, but not the positive side. But when you hurt God, you will be you will be conscious of your heart, and be conscious of what goes in that heart. Because whatever goes in that heart, if it is not of God, it will defy that heart in which God is dwelling. That's why the, that scripture in that proverb told us to guide our heart very, very well. The word of God says we should guide our heart with all diligence. And that proverb, uh, proverb 3 now told us to Trust God with all our heart. If you trust God with all your heart, you will guide your heart against all manner of evil. Because why? You have hearted God in that heart. In that heart. You have hearted God there. You have not minded God. You, 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 not, you, you God is you, he's not in your mind. He's not in your head. So many things goes into our head. But whatever goes into our heart is something that is precious. I pray that God will help us today and make us understand this message more in the name of Jesus. I want us, I want us to open our mouth and begin to pray. We have heard the message, that is it. I will soon log off now so that I can go and do other things I want to do now. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I want us to begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to ask God for mercy. Begin to ask God for forgiveness. Ask God to touch you. Ask God to forgive you every sin you have committed. Ask God to show you mercy. Ask God to wipe away every knowledge of your own in you. Every knowledge of you that is in you. That is depriving the knowledge of God in you. May heaven wipe it off now. Begin to pray somebody. It could be this prayer that will deliver you. And set you free and push you to your next level. I'm telling you. Because a mind that is not in God. Or a heart that is not in God. I mean you know what it means. Especially when the hand of God is in you. When the hand of God is upon you. You have to pray this prayer. Because it might be this that is, have been disturbing you. It might be this type of mentality. That have been drawing you far from your blessing. It might be this type of mentality. Yes. Like me. Yes. When I was living a sinful life, a worldly life, you know, life of boyfriend and girlfriend, a life of a worldly life, I don't know myself. I only, you know, hang out with my friends, enjoy life. Every time we go to joint, we drink, we, you know, we eat, we, you know, we flesh. That, let me, that, that is the language, you know. We, you know, that kind of things, levels. That kind of thing. I thought it, I thought it's the best life. But the moment Christ found me in another dimension, my God, something happened. Things changed. My life was transformed. God began to give me inspiration. I am telling you, it's not a joke. What I'm telling you today is not a it's not a you know a laughing matter. God began to give me inspiration, widening my understanding, open my eyes, speak to me, you know, begin to train me, begin to mold my life, begin to shape me. Because I have chosen to accept Christ into my heart, not into my, into my mind or into my head or into my own knowledge. 
Because when I when I took God into my own knowledge, into my own mind, and into my own head, that was when I go to church and come back and remain the same. I don't change. I go to church. I still do boyfriend. I still keep my boyfriend. Yes, of course. I do my stuff. But we are so foolish. We don't know all these things. And that is why God is telling you now, which is a great opportunity for you to come back. Because God loves you. He cares for you. He doesn't want your, your soul to waste. Neither does he want your destiny to tarnish. Or to tarnish. But the moment I seek God and find him and accepted him into my heart, not into my mind, not into my head, not go to church and come back and remain the same, not hear the word of God and don't do it, God began to give me wisdom that man can't give me. Wisdom that in, the, in those days I was in the world, I couldn't even think such thing is in me. God gave me wisdom and strength and grace to write this book. This book, Make Jesus Your Friend, that is my first book. Make Jesus Your Friend by Evangelist Lovely Nobi. That is my first book. It is not by my power, but by the special grace of God. The second book God has given me the grace to write is The Power of Prayer. The Power of Prayer by Evangelist Lovely Nobi. The Power of Prayer with Prevailing Prayer Points. Another one is Heaven or Hell. See? That's me there. Heaven or Hell. Heaven or Hell. Where do you want to spend your eternity? I have another book called An Able Woman, but that one is out of stock at the moment. Heaven, um, An Able Woman in Christ. An Able Woman is a book that will give you insights on how to be able in the Lord. How to be able and stable in Christ. And it was also show you, you know, great women that, you know, also prevailed, who stood on their ground, who stood on their feet to make sure that the gospel of Jesus is not manhandled. They fulfilled the destiny. The grace was there. Why? Because they allowed God in their heart and not in their mind, nor in their head, nor in their own knowledge. The grace of God gave me this great opportunity to have been what I am today. And I know that he's taking me to greater heights in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what I see today. It doesn't matter the challenge. It doesn't matter the, the battle. God told Jehoshaphat, he said, Jehoshaphat, my son, this battle before you is not yours, but mine. And indeed, God proved himself. God proved himself mightily in the midst of that battle that is before Jehoshaphat. And I pray for somebody today that is ready to take God to heart and not in the mind, not in the head. I am prophesying to you today that if I be a servant of God, called by God, let the grace of God that located me, change me and transform my life. Begin to rewrite your story right there as you're watching me in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God that cannot be insulted locate your surname, locate your name, locate your lineage, locate your destiny and transform it for good in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus begin to wipe out every finger of the enemy in your life because most times you do what you do not because you want to do them. Your spirit is willing but the flesh in you is very strong, pulling you down. I am telling you today that if only you can say no to sin, no to immorality, no to evil voices and begin to cleave yourself to godly voices, to that which God wants you to hear. The grace is available in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace of God. Receive the grace of God and the anointing of God, the power of God to love God from your heart and not from your mind. In the name of Jesus, receive the power of God. Just like he gave it to them, to the apostles in their own time. In the days of Pentecost, they received that power. They receive it in a mighty way. Today, let that power locate you. Power to do things that will please God. Power to live a worthy life of a child of God. In the name of Jesus. King of Gloria, pray for them. 
as many who are trusting you for whatever they are trusting you for God. Because they have keyed into this message. Your word of God says, seek the kingdom of God first. And his righteousness, every other thing shall follow. God, because they have this time and this endurance to wait and listen to this message till the end. Lord, I speak joy in their life. I speak peace. I speak solution to their problems because that is your word. He said we should seek first the kingdom, seek first the word of God. And every other thing will take shape in our life. God, I want to pray for those whose heart is sincerely accepting you now. Turning around for good. Rejecting the things of the world. I pray for them today. That as they go, oh God, lead them to the path worthy of you. Lead them to the path worthy of their destiny. Lead them to the path that they will shout, God, I praise you at the end of that tunnel. In the name of Jesus. King of glory, make known of yourself in their lives, oh God. Prove yourself so strong in their life, oh God. Defy the powers of the enemy in their life. Defy the, 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 the deposit of the enemy in their body, in their soul, in their spirit, and in their destiny. In the name of Jesus. King of glory, begin to rewrite their story right now. Rewrite their stories and make them to become testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Package them, oh God. Suction them. Place them. On a high mountain where they will be seen by all nations. In the name of Jesus, King of glory, help us, O oh God. We can't help ourselves. We believe you down in our heart that we know that of a truth your word has set us free tonight. In the name of Jesus, King of glory, we bless you. I bless you, God, for that soul. Yes, that person. That person you're touching right now, I thank you for touching that soul right now. God, I thank you for touching that soul. I thank you for touching that brother. Thank you for touching that sister right now. In the name of Jesus, let the hands of the enemy over her life, over his life be broken. Even as he or she has made that decision to turn to follow you today and harbor you in their heart and not in their mind, nor their head, nor their own ways of life. But in your own direction, which you have chosen for them from birth. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Redeemer. Because I know they are soaked in your precious blood. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, beloved. Thank you so much. I'm ministering to you here. From Christ, the beauty of holiness. International ministry to those of you who don't know me. I am Evangelist Lovelyn Obi, reaching out to you from Christ, the beauty of holiness, international ministry. And by the grace of God, Christ, the beauty of holiness, international ministry is a prophetic deliverance and prayer ministry where the word of God is dished out undiluted. Yes, this ministry is a soul winning ministry. Yes, I'm telling you by the mandate of God to heal, to deliver, to restore everything that is not of God, whatever the, you have lost. In the past, by the power in the name of Jesus, as you believe in the name of God, your life will be blessed and transformed in the name of Jesus. If you want to know more about our ministry, I will urge you to visit our website on www.cbhim.org. Since I'm going to please help me type our website there, please. Help me type the website www.cbhim.org. If you type it, the website will come up. For people to see and view. Please do go to that website. Take your time. Go round, go round. See what our aims and objectives are. See what the mandate is about. See what the calling is about. See what God wants to do through our mission. Through our our our, our uh, through the, the, the you know the, 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 the mandate He has given in our hands in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you do, your life will never remain the same again. In the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to please. Also visit our Facebook page, Christ the Beauty of Holiness International Ministry. Like the page, share the page, invite your friends to like the page. That is how we can do the work of God together. Even as this message is going on, have you shared it? Have you, have you shared it? Have you shared it? Share it so that others can be blessed. Others can be blessed. And as you do, God will never fail to bless you in return. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank all of you who have been supporting the project in Africa. Yes, God bless you all in Jesus' name. 
And to those of you who God is still laying it in their heart to support, please do support that project. It's a good project that will bring light, that will bring change and transformation in the body of Christ. I'm telling you the truth in the name of Jesus. Whatever the Lord is laying in your heart, please do support that project and the Lord will bless you richly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please keep praying for me and as I am praying for you and I know God in due season, he will honor himself in our lives and we shall praise him in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I appreciate you. Remain blessed until I come your way again. Shalom.